<laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, hello everybody. I'm very happy to introduce you, our uh, new trainer that is going to uh, work with us for the this Model 3. Uh, Shawin, uh, she's been teaching at University of San Francisco in California for 15, 15 years. She teaches graduate students in the MA TESOL program and she teaches ESL there also. So she's been doing teacher training and teacher enrichment for over, over a decade. She has a master um, degree in linguistics, another master's in digital media and learning, and she specializes in teaching digital literacy through hands-on and experiential training. So um, she's another great expert from uh, our international network, so we are very, very happy, proud to have you here for our module. And uh, I, I would just like to say that, uh, to tell everybody that, um, and thank you for the great uh, work you've been doing these days in the model. So all the pictures and the presentations about the uh, activities um, that you uploaded on the model. Thank you very much. The precious uh, uh, material and ideas for for all of us. So thank you, thank you. And uh, so of course the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. What a nice welcome. So just to let you know, I do work in San Francisco at the University of San Francisco and I have really been bringing a lot of this into the university. I I brought many things. <laughs> I'm, I brought this strange world to a lot of my students and it's a real game changer for them. They find that their whole life changes when this world opens up to them. They don't get it in the beginning and then all of a sudden it's like doors fly open and they have all this creativity and all of these ideas. So it's really fun to learn all of the different things you can do with these worlds. We call them affordances of the environment. So I'm going to challenge you all to use your voice when you can and speak up as though you were really standing here with us and you wouldn't really be texting us if we were standing together. So let's just try to speak out because it's good training and it takes a while to learn to do it. But now I sit around, I have a virtual school and we work in three different 3D environments. It's called Learn It Town. I'll type that into chat. I'm in caps all the time. We play with a lot of our students and we test our machinimas on them and we make machinimas with them and we test our games on them and we're always having fun. So we've got something new, it's low level, but they all want to do it anyway. Also, let's all make friends, make sure that, that way we can travel around tonight a little bit. and. What we're going to start with here, first of all, I want to make absolute sure that my voice is clear for everyone. Is there anyone having a problem with my voice? Okay, let me know. And if it does start breaking up, let me know, because sometimes it's just better to re-log and be done with it and <laughs> come back in. Okay, so we're going to start by doing a maze activity. And first, we're going to need to make some changes. So every week, you'll be adding some new manipulations to your skill areas. So for this activity, I've put up a graphic. And I put up two graphics. And you can see you're going to go into Preferences. And you're going to adjust your Move and View. And I'm going to give you a video tutorial in just one second and show you where you really should be for going through the maze. Because when you do different things in 3D environment, you often want to adjust your view angle to have a more positive experience. Then also another thing I'd like to bring to your attention is the other preference setting on the right. That one is under the Movement tab. And this is very useful. I wish someone had told me this many, many years ago. Um, when you see single click on land, you want no action. 
and when you see double click on land you want to teleport to clicked point it's very useful so you can you have this somewhere in your browser if you're in singularity or imprudence find those settings because that I have found has really improved my life <laughs> you don't have to fly you don't have to walk you just reach into the distance double click and you're there and now let's go in and have a look at the video which will give you the instructions for what we're going to do next so it's a five minute video let me get it go into my inventory and get my links and this is called maze activity five minutes click on the link and don't forget to turn off your microphone and can you type done when you're finished okay thanks first of all let's adjust the sun position let's go into the world menu at the top of the screen and go down to sun position and let's make this midday so we can see everything in the brightness of daylight. So I'm going to bring out the maze and I think I'm going to move this over just a little bit so it's not coming off the ground. We're going to adjust our move and view angle. We're going into our preferences and we're going to the tab on the left that says move and view. Now for this exercise we want to be pretty close to our avatar. Other times will want to be farther away but I want you to be almost behind your own head to walk through the maze so you want to be about that far from your head so that you can see your head and your shoulders and you can adjust this distance also so again you want to look at your head and some of your shoulders that way you won't get stuck in the wall of the maze OK, let's apply that preference and click OK. Now let's use our arrow keys and let's practice walking through the maze. So you'll use your arrow keys, go straight, turn left with your left arrow key and see how I got stuck a little bit in a wall. I, and if you do get stuck in the wall like this, let's see okay now I'm in a wall just rotate a little bit with your arrow key or move forward and backwards that should bring you out of the wall now I'm outside of the maze again and we're going to use our camera controls because we're going to be above the maze and we're going to be instructing our partners and giving directions on how to move through the maze. So we'll be saying go straight, turn left, turn right, go back. And we're going to need to see what our partners are doing from above by using our camera controls. And you'll find those at the bottom of your screen. There is an eyeball icon. Click on that and you'll see your camera controls. And what you can do is you can rotate up and down. So you can see either above or below. And then you can zoom out to go farther away and zoom in. And you can move to the right, to the left, and up and down. So now I'm going to go up to the platform above by using my camera controls and going up and rotating up and then I'm going to double click on the platform so I land there. And I'll teleport you if you can't get up to the platform. Now you're going to use your camera controls again so you can see down into the maze. And you can see I'm pretty close, so I'm going to have to back away so I can see how the maze is structured, so I can give my partner instructions. 
Now don't forget you can also use the Alt key and click to zoom in and out if you want to have a bigger picture. It's a little bit difficult to learn to use it, but it's worth it to practice. So between the Alt key, moving in and out, I can follow my partner, and I can rotate around if I need to have a better view. I can move a little bit to the right if I need to, and I can move a little bit forward and backward above the maze. So this is going to give you some practice using your camera controls and it's going to give you some practice moving through the maze with your avatar and adjusting your move and view angle. Okay, let's practice. Okay, looks like people are finishing. Great. And also help me out with the chat if I miss anything, because I can tend to miss things. <laughs> Just use your voice. Um, okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first practice going through the maze. First of all, let's make sure that our sun is set to daytime, to midday. Has everybody done that? And do you know how to do it? Okay, so if you don't know how to do it, let me know and I'll explain it to you. Okay, so we want to be in midday for this activity. And we want to adjust our move and view angle as the video told us. So you really kind of want to be in right behind your head, over your shoulders, and that way you won't get stuck in a wall and we have to practice. You have to practice a lot with your move and view to get better at it. Okay, so is anybody having problems? I'm going to take you to the maze right now. Okay, so I will tell you where it is. We're going to, let me actually put my sun to daylight too. <laughs> Okay, we're going to fly over stage two, the pink thing, stage one, two, and three. And it's just on the other side on a grassy area. And we're going to meet at the entrance. So let's all fly over there. I remember it was so funny when I first flew with my teacher. Okay, and I'm going to click on the ground, and there I am on the ground by the maze. So this is where we're starting. Hi, Roberta. You made it here fast. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I, yes, I can. I can't judge the distances here, so I don't really know how far away people are if they're in voice range. But uh, well, no, I changed my setting, and I'm uh, with a double click. I've got uh, teleporters uh, anywhere. So. <laughs> Great. Perfect. <laughs> It, that's that's why <laughs> I'm so fast. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> I've been uh, in the world of ten years uh, almost. So oh, that's good. I know. <laughs> so you can help other people. Well. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. So it looks like a lot of us are here. So let's just practice walking through the maze and use. Three, try to use three fingers on your arrow keys so you, that you can become fluent in moving short steps. It always requires short steps. And if you're getting stuck in the wall, you may not be close enough to your avatar. And it's better not, not to move as fast. Move slower, take steps, a few steps at a time. You know, rotate to the left, rotate to the right. And it, you have to have a maze that's a certain size, or they just don't work, I found. So I'm going to give you all a copy of this maze. So now I figured out how to get through it. I wandered through it. It worked pretty well. And so now what we want to look at is 
let's hover above. So let's go up above the maze, fly up, and I want you guys to tell me we're going to hover above and we're going to see what our vision is like when we hover above. Can you use your camera controls and really see what's going on down below? Or do you think you need a platform? So what we'll do is we'll spend a few minutes trying to, you can just choose somebody down there and see if you can follow their movements and would it be okay to hover above or would you rather be standing on a platform of some kind and you definitely need to learn to use your camera controls because you've got to, got to rotate for this. Okay, so Monica, if you're stuck in the corner, just rotate around. Rotation's always the answer. And small movements also. Rotating and small movements. And being close enough to your head uh, when you set your angle, your view angle. Okay, so now uh, let me give you... I'm going to pass everybody a note card, a set of note cards and it actually has the instructions and a vocabulary list. So let's see, the maze. Okay, I'm sending you the, the video transcript. I did an Italian translation with Google Translate. I want you to tell me how ugly it is. Uh, I don't know if it does good translation. And then I've given you a vocabulary list that you would use for very simple low-level activity. Okay, here come your, I'm giving them to everybody near me. And if you didn't get them, just let me know and I'll send them to you. So did you get my note cards down here? Did you get note cards from me? Oh, actually, I should give more. Okay. Okay, I'm sending them again because I think only a small percentage of the people. I sent them to only people who friended me, not people who were near me. That was not smart. Okay. Here they come. Okay, now have a look at the Italian and tell me if it's any good <laughs> or is it horrible Italian because that's Google Translate because if the Italian's too bad just go to the English okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my other maze, the one with the platform. So let me clear this away. Okay. Let me go to my inventory. Let me find my medium large maze. Oh, I'll try the quite large. What the heck? Okay, hang on. Let me adjust it. Okay. Run it down. And let's see if the quite. I need to move it to the right. And then I'm going to move it back. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try the platform. Okay, let me get over there. Okay, so 
let's see what happens when we go up on the platform. So let's go up and I'll stand on the platform and you can just double click on it and you'll land if you changed your preferences. And let's talk about this. So come on over here to the platform, everyone. You have to come up and over. <laughs> I like that when people fall, it looks so realistic. OK, so what I want to know from you is when you're standing on the platform and using your camera controls to look down, do you find that's more efficient than hovering over? What do you think than just flying? So what do you think, Carmela? What do you think, Roberta? Oh, yes, for sure, it's a stab uh, stabler position. I mean, I can, uh, I could even follow <laughs> the one who are going through the mates. Yeah, well, I think that was what you would do. You use your camera controls and you just follow yeah. the, you follow your partner down below. And you could have teams and mm -hmm. it could be a race and each team has a chance to express the strategy of moving through the maze and you could even be timing it. But if you wanted to, you could also put little surprises in here and there could be a surprise around every corner, you know. Can you guys on the ground yeah. hear me? Do you hear me on the ground? Or am I too far away? Can you hear me down here when I'm talking up there? Alessandra? Alessandro? Can you hear me? Maria? Can you hear me? Now when I'm up on the platform, can you hear me? Okay, because I really don't know how far my sound carries. Okay. So let's think about this. Let's everybody go up on the platform so we can talk. And I can actually teleport people up here if you want. I offer all these people to teleport. Okay, so I gave everyone a teleport so we can all come and land here and then we'll start our next activity okay so what do you think what could you put down there I mean getting through the maze would be a very good basic activity turn right turn left go back um, if you put some stress into it they could even be, be racing you know, going the opposite direction. You know, one starts at one door and the other starts at the other door. And then three people are up top trying to, on each team, you know, trying to get their team through. And you could also put little tidbits of learning treasure around every corner. And it could be kind of an obstacle course. So, and if you go down the wrong corridor and you get the, a little message in a little bottle in the dead end, it might be some punishment. You know what I mean? Go back or something like that. How was the video? Was the video clear for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Also, you can make low profile mazes. They don't have to be really high, but just remember they have to be a certain size or they don't work. They'll get stuck. Yeah, I know. I I think I decided against the instructions I, because I'd given you the transcript. But we'll see. We'll talk about it when we're finished here. No, never. It's the first time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. 
So there is a lot you can do. And especially when you have a platform up above, you can really add uh, obstacles and crazy things that happen, people that, you know, other students hiding in the maze to scare them. Maybe you have to answer certain questions before you can pass those people in the hall. So you could add all kinds of complications. Yeah, a door opens only when an, a good answer is given. That's really great. That's a really good one. Yeah, so I'm going to give you this maze because it's, um, it's just one object, which is kind of crazy. I made it in Maya. Okay, so let me give you this folder. And it's got everything. Okay. It's got the preferences that you would need. It's got a, a maze only and a maze with a platform. It's got all the transcripts and the vocabulary and the empty instructions. Okay, so let me give, share this with everybody near me. Okay, here they come. And you know, it's pretty hard to make a maze, so if you get one that works for you that's the right size, it's a good idea to work with it and play with it. So, because we're gathering all kinds of information now for our homework assignment, so we're going to have options. So now, let's have some feedback on this. Monica, what do you think of uh, this maze activity and mazes in general? Yes, uh, do you mean me or the other Monica? There are two of us. Uh, I'm Monica Boccoli. Ah, okay. <laughs> Do you have voice, Monica? Okay, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> okay. Repeat slowly. Do, Sorry. <laughs> okay, how, how would you use this maze, and what do you think? Do you think it would be useful for you and fun? But, uh, for uh, my student, is. Uh, a bit difficult because uh, uh, they are uh, eight uh, years only. Oh, you know, eight years old are really good at mazes. They really are. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I teach in primary school. Oh. Uh, so uh, it forces uh, um, sometimes uh, uh, presents uh, a difficult uh, activity for my pupils. Yeah, it, so you have to make it really simple. You know, you could even put stepping stones. Yes. And it could be yes. a basic. Really, really simple. Yeah, like a basic yes. reading activity, verbs, Sorry, yes. you know, all kinds of things like that. So we'll talk okay. about it. We'll talk about all the applications because it's not, I mean, the obvious thing is giving directions and instructions and having races. But you also can have things hanging on the wall to read. You can have things that happen, people that jump out and teach you something or anything. So what they are is they're just stepping stones and locations where at each step someone could learn something, but they think they're playing a game. We're tricking them, okay? All right, enough for mazes. Any questions on this? Okay, I'm going to do away with this maze, so we're going to fall to the ground. So more. And I'm going to take it now. Did everybody get their copy of the maze? Okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> All the way down. So now, tell me. Is the lesson easy enough, the English easy enough for you to understand, or am I going too fast? No. I'm not going too fast, so it's okay. The pace is okay. Okay, so now we're going to do a treasure hunt. And that is going to be...
a treasure hunt uh, regarding music. And you're going to be looking for little gold boxes that glow in the dark. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our sunlight, go to our world menu and set the sunlight to midnight because you want to see the gold glowing boxes. Okay. And each golden box, golden cube, has a number on top of it. And it also plays a line of music in a song. And what you need to do is you need to figure out the missing word in the line of song. So let me give you I'm giving everybody I'm giving you all the song exercise the close okay and what you're going to do you have 25 golden cubes to find. And you have to listen to each one. Uh, here are the instructions. Share. We'll go over them together. And let me know if you're not getting any of these. Okay. Let's open up the instructions and have a look. Okay, so uh, I have a picture of what you're looking for as well. This is the gold cube you're looking for. And you're looking for 25 of them. And they each have a line of song. And you'll click on it and listen. And you want this to be a negotiation, so work with partner or partners and see if you agree on the answer. And I want you to start in different directions so you're not all in one place at the same time. So I'm going to have some of you head off in one direction and some head off in another direction. OK. Now, I don't think there's anything I've forgotten to tell you. But when you think you have all 25 answers, and there's actually only 24 because the last one's just sort of a refrain. Yeah. When you, when you feel you have all of the answers, come back and I will give you the correct answers. And then I will show you the extension that I use with this activity. Okay? Now, I want you to work with a partner, and I want you all to walk in different directions because it's all over the island. So you want to go with a partner, or two, or three, and walk off in different directions. If you see people going toward that cube, go to a different one. And you're going to have to go far and wide. Look behind trees. I am sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner. Sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner. To the woman who has come in, she is shaking her umbrella. To the woman who has come in, she is shaking her umbrella. To the woman who has come in, she is shaking her umbrella. To the woman who has come in, she is shaking her umbrella. Well, they're all busy at work. <laughs> And then Roberto said some of them weren't working, but I went and checked them, and they're all working. But I, you have to be close enough, I think, 
you have to get really close to them. Now, Monica, was that because they weren't playing for you? Probably. Yeah, because I did notice you have to be pretty close to the box to hear it. Yes, yes. I, I tried to, to, to stay closer, but I couldn't hear it mm -hmm. uh, all the same. I don't know why. Some of them I could hear really well. Mm -hmm. Some of them uh, I couldn't hear at all. Could be some lag. We're having some lag tonight. So come back. Uh, okay. Feel free to come back and try again. Yeah, I had the same problem. Course, uh, I almost... I almost heard all of that, all of them, but uh, some were not working. Yeah, so I went back and checked the numbers that you told me, and they played for me. So it could be when there's lag, they're not playing. You know, there's just something happening, too many people around. Or um, it could be that it's just um, it's glitchy, you know, sometimes. But I've had very good luck with this um, in general. Cutting up songs would be wonderful for kids. And I'm going to post some places where you can go get songs that are in the open domain. And so that will that's something you could think about doing. Now I'm going to give you a, sort of a challenge for your homework. And I made a really quick little video for you just to demonstrate to you how you would put together an adventure game or an escape activity. And um, so I'm not putting much drama into it, but I will be giving you a note card and landmark giver because you go to each round ball in step one and you get the instructions to go to step two. So it could be clues, it could be a crime, it could be math problems. It could be any kind of a reading assignment. So a lot of the white signs think of them as you could be handing out note cards. So here's my video. Let's get my links. called an escape adventure activity and this is just a template with no language yeah and it's going to be your homework to and we'll talk about it after the video so just watch the video and think of it as a, a template you could use it's a blank slate okay here we go
Okay, so you learned storyboarding uh, from Anne, and I want you to kind of think of how you would structure an activity that was either an adventure that's driven by note cards and landmarks. So I will give you this note card landmark giver. It's give all content. So let's see. Um, note card. Okay, note card giver. Note card landmark. Note card giver. Okay, and I think I left the information in there. I think you'll get everything. It'll tell you how to do it too. So note card. I'm marking note card. Okay, I'm going to give it to everybody around me because that's what you'll need for this activity, for an activity like this. But think about how you would do it. What would your environment be? Would it be adventure? Would it be a dark, creepy castle? Would there be obstacles to overcome? You know, there could be all kinds of tasks, but they're note card driven tasks, so they go to one step, one stage, and they learn something there, and then they're told to go to the next stage, and then they go to step by step. They either solve a problem, or you could have a very involved math problem, you know, at this one, add this these two numbers, and at the next one, now multiply it by four, and the next one, now divide those numbers by, you know, 17 or something, and then, well, what's your answer? And you could kind of have a par course or an obstacle course, and they think they're playing, but they're not. So what do you think? What do you think of all of this stuff? Yes, detective story. Oh my gosh, you could adapt so many wonderful things. You could have them all wear costumes. We had a teacher at our school, a learned town, who had different drama lessons and they would use a lot of movie trailers and every time they had to learn the lines and they wore the costumes so every class was kind of a, a an experience which is what you want you want your students to have an experience yeah what uh Fiamina, what is difficult for you tell me Well, you know, there are all kinds of things you can do. Like we had a game that was uh, pieces of furniture that we had to place in an old Victorian home. And each piece of furniture, the students had to find out where the piece of furniture belonged, but they had to listen to the history of the furniture. So they had to hear, well, I was built for Napoleon you know, for Napoleon, and I, when I was being shipped, I fell off the ship, and some fisherman found me and took me to, uh, you know, such and such a place, and that's how I came to be in this house. And then you have the sofa has a different story, and you know, they're very exotic tales of, you know, going over the seas and getting lost at sea and all of these things. So you can always put personalities into some of these things and actually have the characters come to life. And so history might be very fun. Uh, we could talk about that a lot more because you could do a lot of treasure hunts. And timelines make good treasure hunts. You know, if you want your students to learn a timeline, you can make treasure hunts and have those 
have one element of the timeline embedded. They could either read it in a note card or listen to it. And they could listen to a story in pieces, that kind of jigsaw puzzle thing. So any other comments? What do you think? Do you think this is your cup of tea? Do you think you could structure some sort of an escape from somewhere or an adventure through somewhere or just a problem solving activity because each of those stations um, in Copper Canyon could have had a problem to solve or a question to answer. Yeah, solving scientific math problems. Also, you know, history has a lot of interesting things and you could even role play history, play the parts. And um, I could see people doing that, taking a part of each character. What's their backstory, you know? Like their characters, but what, what were they like? So now I'm going to be Abraham Lincoln and I'm going to tell you all about me. That's okay. You know, really, it's just getting the concept. I've given you the template, so you got the maze. I'll put it links up so you can get some music and just put them in those cubes. And then, you know, you don't have to build a game or an adventure game. You just need to kind of think of a concept or storyboard it, but you can do that anytime it's convenient for you because this is an enrichment program for you, so it's not like do your homework. <laughs> and then I'm going to teach you another one we're going to talk next week about a scavenger hunt through reading where we I'm going to show you how to make a magazine rack that links out to the web so you can go to the most current editions of newspapers and magazines and you can have your students do a scavenger hunt through reading and sharing. So we'll talk about that next week, okay? And then just if you have a chance to develop something, great. If not, just come and talk about your ideas because they're inspiring for everyone and I'm sure you've got lots of them. And don't be sad because you can't build right now, but just brainstorm with us because we'll all come away with richer ideas, okay? And I'm here anytime you need me or you need to, you have questions, that, things that you can't understand, uh, just send me an email and I'd be happy to come in world and help you. Yeah. And you know, you always have to think of adapting for your students because sometimes things have to be, uh, you know, scaled up or scaled down depending on your the age group and the level, you know, of knowledge. So um, you know your kids, so you know how to adapt. You've been doing it for years, I'm sure. And just take some of these ideas and see how much learning or how much you can flip your classroom too, you know, by using this and then, you know, create problems, have even go to the pizza parlor and have discussions for that matter. It's just kind of fun to get people, get their feet wet, get them used to this. You don't necessarily have to do games. You can just do all kinds of activities that you would normally do. Um, but they're learning in a virtual world. We forget. I've been teaching so long in world that I forget. I'm not sitting around with real people sometimes. It's crazy. I mean, I, I think my brain is being bent, <laughs> you know, because I feel like I'm there. So it's great. Well, thank you so very much for coming, and I'll be around if you need me for questions, and if you feel like developing something this week, we'd be happy to see it next week. It would be lovely. And have a look at what I put up. I put up several of my activities that were adaptations from uh, other things I used to do years ago. 
So that will give you some ideas about how you can adapt materials and then slowly you get more into the role play and the games and reaching a little bit more. But we always start out with adapting our own materials, what we're comfortable with. And sometimes that's the best place to start. So have a good evening, everybody, and email me if you need me. Let me know during the week if you need some help. Yeah, in the Moodle. I'm going to put more up there. I'll put your list of uh, childhood songs that are in the open domain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. A really challenging and uh, amazing lesson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay, I I'm going as well. Um, I'm really worn out. It has been a, a full, a real full day. Okay. Thank you. So Will you take care? Yeah. We'll <laughs> I'm see always you on busy. Facebook. Anyway, and I'm, I'm, when I'm not, I'm trying to 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 be so. So. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Oh, it's my pleasure. Surely. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. And and congrats again. <clears throat> You know, you've done an amazing and brilliant lesson, really. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Wonderful lesson. Congratulations, really, really excellent. And what is great as well is that you're so positive and really calm and uh, um, almost very phlegmatic, and I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Well, I'm happy to come back anytime. Anytime uh, we need to. Yeah, you don't, know. don't tell that too loud. <laughs> Because we'll do. <laughs> it's a promise. <laughs> you too. Bye, Shay. Thanks again. Good night. Bye bye.